Ecom. Chinese students are four grade levels ahead of, a, of U.S. students in math. Let me go into the story here. How in the world is America supposed to remain the greatest country on earth when other nations are absolutely running circles around us when it comes to education? As you will see, one survey found that 15-year-old students in China are almost four full grade levels ahead of 15-year-old students in the United States in mathematics. This is one of the most damning indictments of our education system that I have ever come across, and it is yet another clear indication that what we are doing is simply not working. Our children are not being given the tools that they need to compete in our modern society, and we have only ourselves to blame. Let's just stop there a second. Yep. Yeah. Let's back up where it says that our education system okay, is clearly not, not working. We need to define what our education system is. Our education system today is fraught with privatized education. We Bingo. sit in Michigan, the number one state for privatized, for-profit schooling in the nation. Yep. We have a Secretary of State who has devoted her life to using the, the death of public schools. Secretary those, of Education. Secretary, excuse me. Secretary of Education, and that is using vouchers. Yeah. Her husband ran on it years ago. They've never given it up. Ohio, I just read an article this, this week how the voucher system is strangling the public school system. So when we say system, for you Republicans out there, we're not talking about that system that was the public school system that led the world for years, that put people on the moon and had the greatest uh, industrial revolution. We're not talking about that system. Exactly. We're talking one today that's rotten, that has, has got cells like cancer called privatization across the board. That's the system that's failing. Yeah, and that's coming on the news just within the last day or two that the Michigan legislature has now agreed on refunding charter schools in the state. This was cut from the veto pen from Governor Whitmer. But now they've agreed to refund, I believe it's to the tune of $25 million. Are you kidding me? To charter schools. I wish I was, Jack. You see, you need in the a democratic mean- leader that should say, I am for zero tolerance of charter schools, and they won't do it. Yeah. I can't find one. Abdul El-Sayed, you couldn't even get him to do it. Couldn't get him to do it. No. And this is a guy that's a progressive. Yeah, again, I but use Bernie Sanders? Of a, can- a cancer cell. <laughs> Obviously, there are some cancers that are more aggressive and more uh, fatalistic yeah. than others, right? Yeah. But would you say, oh, give me one of those easy cancers. Give me one of the light-dose cancers. Mm-hmm. No. People say zero tolerance for cancer. Nuclear waste, zero tolerance, right? Mm-hmm. Charter schools, zero tolerance. I don't care how nice someone might be down into your street or your uncle who goes to one. Or, no, zero tolerance, Democrats. Zero tolerance, educators. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to continue the story here real quick. Perhaps you are thinking that the survey must be flawed somehow. Well, this wasn't some fluky survey that was only given to a handful of students. Every three years, the Program for International Student Assessment evaluates 15-year-old students all over the world in a variety of subject areas, and in 2018, approximately 32 million students participated. Now, here it is. 79 countries and economies participated in this study. So this is a good sample, 32 million students. Here's what was discovered. U.S. students continue to fall behind in math. In particular, we have fallen way, way behind the Chinese. This is part of an article written from Psychology Today. Quote, there is no excuse for the U.S. when students in Beijing, Shanghai, Jiangsu, Zhejiang performed near four grade levels ahead of U.S. students in mathematics, end of quote. In addition, the survey also discovered that the most disadvantaged students in China actually performed on par with the average U.S. student. But let me stop there, and Jack, you can probably give the analogy here. Let's say you have a Chinese student that's in the equivalent of one of the lower schools in Grand Rapids. Let's say Union High School. You're, you're, you're familiar with Union. I believe you taught at Union. Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. The lowest 
Chinese student, as far as disadvantage, is performing on par with the average U.S. student. Yeah. Unbelievable. Our disadvantaged students get the bottom of the barrel here. Oh, yes. <clears throat> the charter and, system has a way of tracking them into menial jobs, mm-hmm. fast food uh, industry jobs, but they get a diploma. It costs them some money, and the state of Michigan and the other states pay these these private charter companies. That's what they are, mm-hmm. 7000 per student plus. They send them by a computer. They do some Mickey Mouse work that really would never hold up in a, a serious college, and then they say, here, you are a graduate. We're not teaching. We're not teaching liberal arts understanding. We don't tell students that they have an opinion and a perspective, and it needs to grow by understanding mankind, a liberal arts. No, our philosophy is one that comes from the business world because they're the ones running the school system today. Mm -hmm. And that philosophy is all you need to do is learn what job you can do, and then you turn into a worker bee. Mm-hmm. You can't be a citizen. You, you, you have no historical reference of mankind's struggle. You, you haven't read books that talk about the poor being taken advantage of by yeah. the rich for, for eons. That, that's not part of learning. Yeah. You learn some specific job that keeps you alive. That's it. And that, that template is why we're so stupid. Mm-hmm. It's that, it's that simple. Now, there was a time when everybody was equal. They all had chance to a liberal arts education. Now, Jack, I want to mention this real quick. This is something we did not talk about off the air before we started. I have a friend who has, I believe he's a third grader, and he's getting bored in class. She has asked the teacher to give him something a little more... Challenging? Challenging. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. And the answer is No. Do you want me to tell you what district that is? Go ahead. Rockford. <laughs> wow. That surprised me. And I told her. I, I said, when I was in elementary school, when I was in first, second, third grade, I was always advanced one grade for, I believe, English and mathematics. I, I forget. It's been way too long ago. A former guest on our show, Anonymous Al, he, was at, he went to high school with me. He jumped from 6th grade to 8th and was taking ninth grade courses in the 8th grade. He graduated two years ahead in my class. And I went to a school in the middle of a cornfield, literally. What the hell has happened in 30 years, Jack? Well, you're asking a question. So does the writer of this article. He says, we used to have the best education system in the entire world. The envy of the world. <laughs> and now we have become a nation of drooling idiots that can't even think straight. Oh, God, the examples he give are beautiful. Yeah, Let me try one of these. Okay. Yes. This comes from Los Angeles, where a man was recently caught sexually fondling a dead woman by his own body cam. A cop. An LAPD cop. This veteran Los Angeles cop who was assigned to downtown Central Division was caught on his own body cam footage allegedly fondling the dead woman. And his supervisors have reviewed the video, according to the Los Angeles Times. The alleged incident took place when the LAPD officer and his partner responded to a call about a possible dead woman in a residential unit. The newspaper reported citing sources. Now, this, this has made national news. I saw this on NBC. I saw this on Inside Edition. Basically, and you might want to shoo the children if they're listening to this for about a minute or so, this guy is on body cam fondling this dead woman's breast and nipples. He shut the body cam off thinking, oh, it ain't going to record it. Here's the thing. The way his body cam works, that manufacturer, it pre-rolls two minutes of footage before it's turned on. Oops. This is how dumb they are. Well, the, the incident, you know, I used to watch, uh, I think it was, was it David Letterman where they go? No, it was Leno, Jay Leno. What? They go out in the street and they ask people questions. They say, oh, yeah, the man on the street interviews. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. Uh, what animal, uh, where does pork come from? <laughs> they don't know. They, they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, where's the Mason-Dixon line? 
It's, it's they don't it's, know. It's something in garment. The one guy said it's a line in garments. It's, it's a <laughs> brand name. Jeez. No, we we have a nation of absolute fools. We're headed by an absolute fool. Yeah. It it all makes sense. Then there's the next example that's listed there. Will you please read that? This okay, this a, one. This also has made national news. Let me give you another example of how dumb we have become. South Dakota has decided to crack down on the meth epidemic in their state. But unfortunately, not a lot of thought was put into the advertising slogan for the campaign. The state of South Dakota has a new anti-drug campaign. But its slogan is raising eyebrows because this is it. This is it, folks. These were political leaders. It is. Meth, we're on it. (laughs) Whoever wrote that must have been on meth. Unbelievable. You'd think better if you're on meth, I believe, than that. Yeah. You you, you really think that this this is the... (laughs) What, this That's is the antithesis of appearing that you're against meth. Yeah. By the way, they mentioned here this stat. Approximately 24 million Americans have taken an illegal drug within the last 30 days, and it's getting worse with each passing year. 24 million Americans. Because they, they're trying to escape. I can tell you why. It's because they see what's going on in the news, what the news is publishing. is death, gloom, and doom, and... People are fed up with it. I can't tell you how many people that I hear every day, I don't watch the news. It's too depressing. No, you need to watch the news because you need to hold people accountable. We're supposed to be running this country. Not the rich. The people are. Not the corporations. Folks, you think somebody that's benevolent is going to run your life if you're inactive, if you put your head in the sand? You think that's going to work out right? Has it ever worked out in history? You remember when Reagan claimed that we're a city on a hill mm-hmm. in his, I think it was his uh, acceptance speech. I don't know where it was. Yeah. I didn't listen to many of his speeches. But, <laughs> Neither did I. But he said, but here, here's where we really are. You know, we were once a great light to the rest of the world. This is the author of this article, not Reagan. Oh, but today, a thousand points of light, too. Yes, yeah. Bush. Right. <laughs> today, yeah. we're a large chunk of our population. They can barely read. Right, speaker function in society. Yeah, let McDonald's me. McDonald's has the pictures for their menus. Oh yeah, because they know a great percentage of their customers can't read the damn menu. Let they me, can't read it fast enough. Can Can I go through these stats real you, quick? You, you got it. Let me Let me do this. How many amendments are in the Bill of Rights, Jack? Ten. Do you know the seventy four percent of Americans did not know that? Seventy four percent of Americans did not know. That there are 10 amendments in the Bill of Rights. Jack, what's covered by the First Amendment? Where, where are the freedoms Speech. protected? Uh, that's the right to assemble, uh, all the good ones, the freedom of speech. and Yeah, free, it, it covers religion. It covers free speech. It covers a free the invasion. press. You can't have people come into your home. It covers uh, the right to petition the government for redress of grievances, the right to peaceably assemble. Thirty-seven percent of Americans could not name any one of those rights protected by the First Amendment. Jack, what are the three branches of government in this country? We have the executive, we have the legislative, and we have the Supreme Court. The judicial. Yep. Only 26 percent of Americans, you're among them, can name all three branches of government. That, wait a second. 26 percent of Americans. Only 26 percent of Americans what is the percentage all three of Americans branches. that have graduated branches. from college? Fifty, maybe. I'm sixty. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. So you got you've got at least thirty percent of Americans with a college degree that no don't, don't know the three branches of government. And let's go a step further. Forty percent of Americans, four out of ten in this country, did not know who was running for vice president from any of the major parties. In the 2016 election, they now didn't know Tim Kaine. They didn't know Vice President Mike Pence, or as I call him, plate full of piss, who was just in town I was just recently. Say, he just flew over our heads a few minutes ago. Yeah, they didn't know. Forty per- four out of ten people didn't know. What the hell? Well, here's some. It gets of the- worse, Darren. Keep going. Buddy. Yeah. Here, listen to this. North Carolina's legislature is considering passing a law that North Carolina public school students, in order to get an F grade, they would lower the percentage. 
In other words, they're going to pass these kids unless you hit 39% or less.